こんにちはテスラ全力チャンネルのタイツですパランティアの価値はファウンドリーの将来的なポテンシャルをどう解釈するかで決まってきます前回の動画ではその部分を3分で解説しましたがあれだけでは真の実力を説明しきれないので今回は特別編として映像資料を字幕付きで共有しますはい。Uh, today, we work across a lot of different industries, 40 plus industries,、uh, a lot of places outside of government,、uh, and across the commercial sector, in the nonprofit sector, and all parts of the government now as well. We have three software platforms at Palantir that we think of as operating systems Gotham is our operating system for intelligence and defense, Apollo is our operating system for deploying and managing complex software footprints across many different environments, and Foundry, which is what we're going to talk about today, is what we think of as our operating system for the modern enterprise. If we think about the modern digital landscape, we recognize that most organizations are already on a journey, right? They're setting up data lakes, data warehouses, they're deploying many different types of analytic solutions. And, you know, in fact, we're partners with a lot of the folks that you might think of out there in the industry.、Um, I think what we tend to see is that those technologies come together in a very classical reference architecture. Right? You have different data sources coming in as batch and streams, being loaded into different data platforms, data lakes, data warehouses. That data then undergoes different types of transformation. It's then prepared for analytics and typically then deployed into BI applications or reporting. You can kind of think about this as a linear flow or an assembly line of data、uh, where you have producers on one end kind of responsible for putting the data together and then producing the data products, which are then consumed by different types of business users through reports or dashboards. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with, the, with reports or dashboards,、um, it does leave a lot on the table when it comes to well, how do I benefit from people learning what to do when they actually see that data? How do I understand what actions to take as a consequence of presenting that data to business users? And how do we actually engineer a feedback loop between people on the front lines and people in the back office actually doing data and analytics work? You sort of see data coming together in reports or dashboards. You might notice an insight, but then as a business user or an operational user, you just kind of pivot away to the next thing you have to do.、Um, and we think that while this is kind of sufficient, this model, this assembly line for reporting and for dashboards, most organizations that we talk to feel the need to go beyond this model, just given the complexity in the world. And so you're kind of limited by this producer consumer paradigm. And I think, you know, if we think about what's happening in the world today, Kind of both in terms of exogenous shocks out there in the world, the complexities inside organizations' four walls with their partners. You know, just having this assembly line approach isn't sufficient for dealing with that complexity. And so, what we see kind of over and over again is that folks want to be able to use kind of the exhaust, the learnings, the feedback from people interacting with data and models to better inform their processes. They want to, you know, kind of consider those learnings not exhaust, but fuel for the business. And so we think about, well, how do we kind of turn this typical producer consumer paradigm on its head and actually kind of have a different modality where there are data kind of producers and consumers in every part of the business working together in a common platform? So we think about Foundry as providing an open architecture for closing the loop between operations and analytics. It provides the ability to bring your existing data and model tooling together inside of an ontology, which you can then use to build workflows, applications, and actually capture decisions with. To inform better operations over time and continuous learning. With Foundry, we kind of say to kind of everybody in the enterprise, to data teams, bring your data lakes, bring your data warehouses, bring kind of all the data that exists across different systems and connect that into Foundry as sort of what we think of as the nouns of the enterprise, right? The semantics. And to the analytics teams, we say the same thing bring the models, bring the linear programming models, the ML models, the stored procedures, and allow those to be connected into the same foundation. As sort of the verbs that go along with the nouns that give you kind of all the business processes. And we think if you can then kind of assemble this operating layer iteratively over time through use cases,、uh, you then build out a very powerful foundation to do many things. You can drive more and more kind of operational workflows that are read write, where business users are contributing their knowledge back into the foundation. 
You can do kind of more sophisticated analytics, like running scenarios and what-if analysis. And critically, you can capture decisions and pipe those to all sorts of different enterprise systems, both new and old. So again, we think by closing the loop, it's a very different architecture than kind of the one-way assembly line of data. In terms of how it works, Foundry comes with everything you need from top to bottom to implement complex operational workflows. This includes data integration, model integration, an ontology layer that encompasses objects and relationships and actions and business processes, an entire workflow layer that includes application building, self-serve analytics, and more, and a decision orchestration layer that's designed to capture learnings from end users and actually then feed those back to analytics and data teams and other business systems. And so for fresh architectures, we think Foundry can get folks operational in days. But we also understand that most organizations have made investments in existing data and analytics tools. And so Foundry's modular architecture allows you to bring your own data platforms, data lakes, data warehouses, analytics tools, ML services, and plug those into Foundry's data integration and model integration layers and extend them up into the ontology and into operational workflows. And so Foundry is designed to work in heterogeneous complex architectures that are changing over time all the time. One of the most common integration patterns we get asked about is how does Foundry work with my existing data platforms? My Snowflake, my GCP, my Azure, my AWS data warehouse. And Foundry can be deployed in a mode that is purely extending those platforms into operations, where Foundry will never fracture the source of truth that exists in those data platforms and instead will marry them up. And so you can think about this as setting retention policies, security policies, and bi-directional data syncs that will ensure that Foundry is always in sync with those existing data systems. As organizations evolve, we expect they're gonna to continue to invest in new data tools, new analytics tools, new governance tools, and we've designed Foundry to make sure that it can be a great citizen in a landscape that's only gonna get more and more complex over time. In summary, Foundry is designed to deeply integrate with existing architectures data platforms, data lakes, data warehouses, and all manner of analytics solutions as well. Integrating both data and analytics primitives into an operating layer that can be used to power feedback-driven workflows across the entire business. You can get started today with a single workflow in Foundry, but the power of Foundry is really in the compounding that occurs when you scale from a single workflow to enterprise use cases that span the entire organization. We're excited to see what you're gonna be able to do with Foundry.